Welcome to our second session of Ask Dr. Drizzle with our guest star, Miss Joanna. Joanna, how are you today? Doing great, Daisha. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and so we can show you what's happening today. We are really excited to be here. Unfortunately, we are not live on Facebook right now because Zoom is overwhelmed. But that's okay, we will make sure that we post this. But we have a question for you today, Dr. Dr uh, no, I'm Dr. Drizzle. So yes, there was a question for me and I reached out to an expert, um, Miss Joanna Radford. And um, before we get to that question though, Joanna, last week we had a wonderful time working with hydroponics. And we had students all around the country who were building their own hydroponic gardens. And I say students, but we had families too. So we had families from Floral, Arkansas. We had a family um, in uh, Destin, Florida. We had a few families up in right outside Omaha, Nebraska. And I can't even name the other ones, but thank you so much for teaching them how to build their own hydroponics. Um, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. So I'm sure we'll tie that into today's a little bit, but let's go ahead and look at our questions. Our question today comes from Ruby, and Ruby is a friend of mine. Her parents are wonderful friends from Chicago. So here is her question. Hi, Hi Dr. Drizzle. I'm Ruby, and I come from a suburb outside of Chicago. I was wondering, could you grow a vegetable from a vegetable? Thank you. So that is a great question. And since I know very little about this, um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my, to my uh, expert, Joanna. But I will tell you that the two definitions she sent me today were perpetual and propagation. So I'm going to stop sharing our screen and actually give it over to Joanna. And Joanna, again, thank you. And um, tell us a little bit about, oh, I lost your picture, Joan. Oh, there you are. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, what happened last week and then what's going to happen this week. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Drizzle. Uh, yes, last week we did hydroponics and hopefully you guys have started uh, your hydroponics system. And here's what we did last week. And yours may be looking like this too. Let's see if you can get in. This is lettuce. Remember, we started the lettuce and it is now germinated. So that is a week in that, uh, and hopefully next week it will even be bigger. So it won't be long and we'll be able to have some in our tasty salads. So today is a lot like last week. We are gonna be growing for the most part in water. So Ruby, thank you so much for your question. It is right on target for this. Uh, and it's basically using scraps from your kitchen to grow them. Uh, purchase one vegetable or maybe even pick it up this summer out of your garden if you're growing a garden. Um, so perpetual means uh, Dr. Drizzle had put it up means never ending or changing. So we are trying to make vegetables grow continuously is what we're doing. And propagating, that means, uh, grows new plants from what we already have. So it may be cuttings, it may be stems, or other parts of the plant. So that's what we're going to see what we can do. It is a great way, um, the benefits of it, a uh, great way to get a new, brand new vegetables. It's free, because you've already paid for it, right? And it's easy. If you are into organic food, which a lot of us are, this makes it even more affordable because a lot of times it's a little more expensive if you're looking at organically grown food. So easy, we just stick them in water and watch them grow. We just have to know what parts that we stick in water, Dr. Drizzle. Yes, we don't want to stick the wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> no, it may not work so well. So I've got some examples to show us today. Anybody know what this is? I bet you do. Celery. So we're gonna use the celery. I love it with peanut butter on it and a little bit maybe of um, put some raisins like little ants walking on a log so we can make fun with our, 
our food. But we're gonna look at maybe, if you do this by yourself, I'm not sure I would recommend it because we're using sharp utensils, so knives. Make sure you use a parent or a, somebody that's older that can use knives safely. We're gonna look at the end, and if we investigate our celery, the part that actually is grown in the ground, this is the root part, okay. not the top of the celery. This is where the leaves are, the shoot part. So we're not looking at the shoots, but we're looking at the end. And we're going to cut maybe an inch from the end. And this is gonna be left for us now. So I'm gonna put this over here for later. I can't wait. Okay. So we have this, it's like the stump. And if there's anything that's flopping off, we wanna get rid of it because it's gonna cause problems down the road. It might cause mold, slime, and we don't want it. So we'll just trash it. But here we have this and we make sure that we have a container. I have already put some water in there. And this is really hard folks, put it right in there. You will want to, and I, I call it a stump, you probably want a half an inch of water over there to make sure that that root end, and the roots go straight down, not the top that you just cut. And the neat part of this is you're gonna set it up in a windowsill, and you can't see that, but here you go. Set it up in a windowsill so it gets some sunlight, because remember from last week it needs sun to grow. And in the center, you're gonna see little sprouts come up in probably about two or three days. Oh, wow. And so it's not gonna take long, but you can't eat it in two or three days. You might could, but you're not gonna eat a lot. You'll still be hungry. So wait a little bit longer, and within probably a week, you'll think, oh, I might have some tasty celery. And in a month, you definitely are gonna have some, but you may have some. That's where you're gonna look at, right in the center. And I'll show you how it looks right now. So nothing's really growing, but that's where it's gonna start growing. Now, there's also some other veggies that we can work with. What is this? Oh, this goes with our salads too. Mm. That looks delicious. Is that romaine lettuce? It is romaine lettuce. And you can do this with most any lettuce, not head lettuce, but red lettuce, um, green lettuce, the leafy lettuces. Okay. And we have to hear again, we've got some leaves that are being unruly, so we take them off, we set them to the side, and we'll wash them real good and eat those. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing. This is the part that where the roots had grown. And when it was harvested, it was cut off, so the roots are probably in the soil somewhere on a farm. Okay. This is the part that we are gonna look at. That's what we want because it's gonna grow new roots. We're gonna take about an inch, inch and a half, and cut it. And here again, this is for supper tonight. <laughs> So, and this is what we typically throw away, or your mom and dad, grandma and grandpa throws away because we don't eat it. However, what we can do is we can get a container, any kind of container that holds water will do. Okay. And we're gonna put the end that has the root in the water. Put it in the water there. Now, we're gonna watch this. In two or three days, we may have to fill some more water up. You want about a half, a half an inch or so of water over that, that end where the roots were. You don't want it to dry out. Once it starts drying out, then your lettuce is gonna start deteriorating. There is going to be roots that start growing out, and that's good, because that's where it's gonna bring up more of the water to produce our leaves. Okay. Okay, so here is where, in the center again, is where we're gonna see some leaf growth, probably within two to three days, so it's not gonna be long, so that's gonna be great. In about two weeks, we're gonna have probably a half a head of lettuce right there that we can eat in a salad. And we can continue to grow, grow again, cut it off, keep it in the water, and go again. So that's where perpetual comes from, this continuation of growing your own veggies. That's right, that's right. And it's so exciting, so exciting. Now this too, if you wanted to, oh, I'll show you. I started a little bit of something earlier, trying to get ready for us today. Onions. 
Okay. I know some kids don't like it, but mine love it. Love onions. They're strange. But I went ahead and you do kind of the same thing. Where the roots, not the shoot part, but where the roots were, I had cut maybe a half an inch or so, an inch of the onion. It's a yellow onion. And I just went ahead and put a container of water and put it in the water. And after a week, it's been in there about a week, we see, I don't know if you can see the roots right here at my finger. Yeah. They're starting to grow. So we can leave it in there. And in a few more days, probably we'll probably start to see some growth up here on the top. So we'll start seeing a little green up here. But if we wanted to, we could actually plant it in soil. Only if you want to. You can just leave it in the water. Sometimes I just leave it in the water. But if you wanted to plant it, easy way to use is something around your house. I don't know if you like soda. You have these bottles or any kind of bottles, but we recycle. So to recycle, I went ahead and cut off the bottom to one of them and put some holes in the bottom because we need good drainage. Right. Bad drainage makes makes the uh, roots drowned. And we're not going to have any veggies at all. And my holes are a little big. I don't know if you can see the holes. They're not too clear there. Right. See? Um, so they're kind of big. And I don't want the soil to go through. I want to make sure that we keep all the soil in there. So I found a coffee filter. I'm going to put a coffee filter in there. And that's going to keep it. It's still going to allow the moisture to go through it and drain. But it's going to keep the soil where it needs to be, where my plant is. So I got some topsoil, some planting soil, and I'm gonna put it in there. Let me put it over here so I don't get it all over the table. Okay, so I filled it up. I'm gonna take my onion part, and this is the part that has the roots, and I'm gonna plant it right in there. Make sure it's covered up real nicely, at least the roots. You don't wanna cover the top part, because the top part is where we're gonna start growing. Just make sure it's watered. You may need to check that every day. It might dry out a little quicker. Make sure it's watered, whoops, and in sunlight, because we need sunlight, warmth. So there we have our onions and can't wait to see it start to grow. So there's lots of other things that you can use in the kitchen of your scraps. Carrots, now carrots are really neat because it's not really gonna grow another carrot, but it will grow the greens, the tops of the carrots. And did you know you could eat those? I did not. They're quite tasty in salads. Or if you really wanted to be fancy, you could do a carrot top pesto. So try that sometimes. Okay, so with these, we're gonna cut, cut the same way, about a half an inch from the top part this time. Okay. Because you know with the carrot, when it grows, all of this is under underground. We're not gonna grow this. It will not grow another one of the carrot, but it will grow from the top up. So we want to take and add, let me take add some water to my container. We're not gonna put the tops underwater. We're gonna put what we just cut. That's a little tricky because it's a little different, but we're gonna put it in there. Whoops, I've got too much water. A little bit much. Mm -hmm. You don't want it covered up, but you want it enough to where it can take up the water. I don't know if you can see it in there. The water yeah. line is probably right about there. And the tops, we're gonna start seeing some green come up probably in three or four days. And it won't be long, we'll be able to cut that off and put it in our salad to eat. So we can do that with carrots. Nice. Uh, another neat thing is potatoes. Hmm. Have you heard that potatoes have eyes? I have heard that. They do. Yes, they're watching us all the time. But if you can see these little indentions, they're called eyes. And they're actually where the potato will sprout and make a new plant. So as long as you have a potato that has an eye, then you can put those in water and it will sprout. Or have you ever had these left in the pantry a little too long? Yes. 
they start to sprout and you think, oh no, let's just trash it. It's not any good for anything. Well, guess what? It is, it's making you a potato. So you can plant that and it will grow potatoes. You can also do that with sweet potatoes, Dr. Drizzle. I love this that. This one's already started to sprout. And if you can see. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once it starts to sprout, same way. It will have roots and you can plant it in the ground. You probably want to go ahead and put this in water. Okay. okay. So I would just have it in some water. And you probably ideally want a little bit bigger container than this. Or if not, just watch it. And it will start growing these little roots outside of these eyes. Okay, so another great way to have plants. Now one last thing I brought, I believe, yes, right here. Mm, I smell something. <laughs> <laughs> it's really smelling over here. Yes, so garlic. What do you think, Dr. Drizzle? Can we plant the whole thing? I don't know. I'm not a big garlic fan, so I don't play with it a lot. What do you think? Oh, goodness, I do a lot of garlic in my food, because I don't know. I'd, maybe half Italian or something. I don't know. But I am just working this out. This is, I'm getting one clove. Okay. And I found out when I was cooking, and I decided that I liked uh, garlic. I thought when they called for a clove that this was a clove. These are cloves. It makes a big difference. There's a lot of flavor in this thing. Right. <laughs> so you a little too little much bit of flavor. It is. So you can take one of these, and maybe you have used all the others, but you're saving one, and you can place this in water. Don't submerge the whole thing, because the whole thing, once it's submerged, it'll almost drown itself. Or you can take it and plant, um, take your soil like we did, and put it in the soil. So you can do that as well. So I have a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna put mine here in this container. And let's see, I think I got too much in there. And about half, you want it about halfway. Okay, so there, and you can't see it. I picked a wrong container. But <laughs> you can set it up and you can put multiple ones in. Uh, sometimes you can put it just in our plastic cup and get all these out and put them in there and put some water in them. As long as they're not submerged completely, then they will grow some more garlic for you. And it's not the actual bulb that they're going to be growing. Um, it's called scapes. Have you ever heard of a scape? Um, not with a vegetable, no. Hmm. No, it's kind of strange. But when they start to grow, it'll be almost like a very slender... Almost looks like a, I could say a skinny green bean, maybe, with no beans in it. Okay. So you can take those and cut it off and use it for flavoring in your cooking. So that's another way that you can make perpetual uh, plants, Very spices cool. to use too. A lot of the herbs you can use that way. Um, you can take just cuttings off of them and put, their, put it in water and let them root. Great way to continue a lot of the scraps that we have in our kitchen. Well, Joanna, thank you so much. I'm going to share our um, deck again. And then would you also share that little acronym that you did last week? I think we called it WOW. And what does that mean again? WOW. Now, we use that for our hydroponics, correct? Right. Okay, so, so we need... hydroponics, they needed... We need water, water, oxygen, oxygen, and what was the third one? Was it warmth? Warmth. So that's where we get all of this. We will need that again. So remember, our sunlight is our warmth and our window sill. Or if you, you know, if you have um, maybe even out on the deck, the patio, front porch, you can put that as long as it gets some warmth. And we're checking our water. We're checking it every two to three days. And you may need to add, or if it gets a little cloudy, you may need to uh, change your water in and out. So take and dispose of that and put some more in. Okay. Now, I did forget to say something on the onion when we were looking at the onion. Do you know when you're cutting that onion, it has a, 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 a skin on the outer edges of it. So you want to peel that off and dispose of that because if you left it on there, that's going to cause maybe mold and 
you know, some slime building up. So anything extra, it's kind of like what we had taken off the lettuce and the celery, all that extra off of it there. Right. So we don't want that to be uh, causing any problems later on. Right, we definitely don't want to have um, slime. No, not this time. <laughs> not this time. So I just want to share that this is our deck. This is uh, everything that you've taught us today we have put into a deck for students to look at at home and parents if they need to go back. Again, we apologize for the Facebook Live not working, but this is gonna be just as good. Um, these are some other veggies that um, Joanna has shared that will, that will propagate, that will be perpetual uh, veggies. And you know what? You can live off of those. Those looks like a great, a great way to have some um, wonderful food in your house. And then she also gave us a few um, pieces of information. So in case we forgot from watching the video, you can look back at this. I want to thank Ruby um, very much for this wonderful question. Uh, Ruby is a very smart young girl from right outside Chicago and um, just really appreciate her jumping in and helping us with the question this week. And then as always, Joanna, thank you for being here. Um, next Wednesday, we're coming back again. And we're gonna talk about transplanting. And um, that doesn't mean your heart or a liver, it's not a medical term this time, but we're gonna see how to maybe take those small um, veggies that we grew through hydroponics or through uh, perpetual veggies or from our first time when we planted uh, cool season veggies. Now, what can we do with them as the weather's getting warmer? The uh, bit.ly or the link for today is bit.ly backslash drizzle perpetual. And that's where you're gonna find all the information. Joanna, thank you so much again for being here today. Um, I'm sad that we can't see each other all the time when we didn't get to have Easter together, but mm -hmm. we're having these moments. So that's pretty cool. So thank you everyone. This is Dr. Drizzle and Joanna. Talk thank to you soon. You.